Welcome to Live from Brussels, a monthly review series by the Nova Green Lab that explores the latest developments in European energy and climate law and policy. Every month, I will be here in Portugal together with Jean Maria Botelho, our research assistant, introduce a specific term which will be followed by two interviews. The purpose is to have two different points of views on the most recent developments in European energy and climate law and policy covering a wide range of topics from renewable energy to carbon neutrality, from the energy efficiency to the circular economy. And we could not start better. The first episode is about a new legal mechanism to cap the price of natural gas to reduce energy costs and protect against future price spikes. Since last year, Europe has faced its most challenging energy crisis in the last 50 years. The core of its crisis is the increase of gas price, which have spilled over in the price of electricity at wholesale and retail market. Cap the price of gas is not uncontroversial. It is a mechanism that needs to be understood well. Which gas price has been capped? Or the economic effects? We are now in Brussels with Joana to interview two experts. The first one is Miguel Giltertre, Chief Economist at TG Energy, who will give an overview on what consists the gas price cap and how it affects consumers and businesses. The second one is Konal Husef, the researcher at Bruegel. The gas price cap, uh, as it is known legally, the market correction mechanism, is a tool uh, that acts on the prices of futures and derivatives in gas. The purpose of this uh, tool was to avoid situations like the one that we had in August 2022, where the prices were uh, of these products at the end of August around uh, 340 euros per megawatt hour. One week later, they were 220 euros per megawatt hour, and we saw a lot of volatility that was not uh, related to real supply and demand conditions. It is not a cap on the price of the gas delivered on the daily uh, price uh, and the day ahead markets, but it acts on these month ahead, three month ahead and year ahead products to avoid precisely the market to go into certain prices. Now, it is not a structural tool, so it's not affecting the price structurally. Uh, it is only activated if two conditions are met. The first one, uh, we need to have prices at a certain level, and this level is 180 euros per megawatt hour for a number of days. But there is also a second condition. These prices, they need to be higher than the global LNG prices with a spread of 35 uh, euros per megawatt hour for a, for a similar number of days. It, this is important because this is what we saw in August. It's not the fact that prices were high, but they also seem to be detached from the prices in global markets. So it is more of, uh, let's say, a financial markets tool that aims at providing a disciplinary effect so that we don't see the market going into uh, certain territories. I suppose the first thing to say on the gas price cap is the conditions for it being activated are quite specific, let's say, in the sense that it seems unlikely that it'll it'll come into force very often, if at all. Um, it, when we look back to the, the, the peaks of the, the gas price, the TTF price that happened back in August, uh, even in those conditions, uh, the gas price cap likely or almost certainly wouldn't have entered into effect. And, and those are the most extreme prices that we've seen in a very long time or at all in, in the European market. So the first thing to say is that it's, it's likely probably won't be implemented. Um, the second thing to say that if it were to be implemented, um, yes, you might see a, a, a so-called decoupling from, from gas to electricity prices by the merit order model and your marginal pricing and so on. Um, but of course, the the corollary to that is you you dampen the high price signal effectively, and you reduce incentives for demand reduction. You reduce uh, incentives to save gas, which is the most important thing to do during a, a supply crisis. So, the the approach of capping the prices in general seems like. Uh, taking the, the the wrong end of the issue, rather reduce the demand first, and then you won't have to cap the prices at all. Would be would be the the take that we'd have, and in fact that seems to 
been what has played out anyway. We've seen prices go down a lot, and we have seen a, a significant amount of of gas demand reduction across Europe. So, so those those dynamics seem to be taking place regardless. Um, and so, that kind of makes the 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 measure of having a price cap somewhat redundant when it's it's unnecessary and unlikely to be implemented given the current state of the market. <laughs> I think that first of all, this is a tool that has been designed to, uh, you know, introduce no risk to security of supply. Uh, at all times that it would be activated, uh, the price would be much higher than the global LNG prices. So this is why we have the second condition of the spread with the global with the global markets. So at any times, the prices with this tool applied would be 35 euros per megawatt hour higher than the global LNG. And in that sense, there would not be a risk to attract LNG. But I would like to also mention that during the year we have had several, you know, uh, different prices. And yet, uh, I'm talking about year 2022, and yet we have been able to attract record levels of LNG at all times. So I think that in the levels of prices that we are considering, and you know, this tool, as I mentioned before, we were talking about 180 euros per megawatt hour. At this level of prices, there's not going to be a problem for Europe to continue to attract uh, to attract LNG. Now, at the same time, uh, as I said, this is uh, you know a tool that aims at a disciplinary effect uh, on the markets. It's clearly not the price you know that it has to be uh, paid uh, for gas or signaling you know the uh, the price that uh, europe is going to pay for uh, for for its gas i would like to note that since the tool was adopted i mean we have seen prices going from 90 to 55 euros per megawatt hour so a very large decrease and the prices during the month of uh, january have been quite stable <laughs> It's true to say that we appear to have made it through this winter relatively unscathed uh, without, you know, uh, rationing or any any serious consequences of that nature. Of course, we've had the, the high prices and the impact on on cost of living and inflation and so on has been a, a huge problem. But we, we seem to have made it through this winter uh, relatively OK. But that doesn't mean, as you point out, that next winter is is uh, a given thing, that it will be fine. Um, so, th- of course, the two things you need to do to ensure that you 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 can manage through a winter with with uh, less Russian or zero Russian gas compared to previous winters is increase your supply. So that's about getting all of the the the, the LNG you know import infrastructure that you need uh, on speed on the system as soon as possible, and and that is taking place. But of course, the quicker than that can that can happen, the better. Also, but securing you know long term contracts, continuing to, to try and develop that, and and have guaranteed contracts in place, and then the other side of it is is to continue to reduce demand, and and this is not about reducing demand in an involuntary way where we you know shut down industries because they can't afford the gas price. This is about controlled, coordinated uh, demand reduction, uh, and to do that in a, in a in an orderly way on a European level, and combining those two things, I think is is really the 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 recipe it seems quite simple but and of course implementing that is much more difficult is the recipe to managing a, another winter without russian gas again on the gas price mechanism uh, the conditions are so uh, so difficult to to see them being implemented that it's unlikely that it will come into play when you especially the point that the the ttf price needs to be 35 euros per megawatt hour higher than whatever the global lng price is and of course you know if if the ttf price will go up yes but likely so will the global price and therefore uh, having these caps these two things diverging something serious would have to happen in in european markets some some you know huge congestion of some sort would have to take place uh, or uh, a serious loss of supply from a, another source that we're depending on so i think it's it's about the the simple old you know increase supply and reduce demand that's the the answer uh, it's it's easier said than done of course um Another mechanism, perhaps, for for securing supply is is the joint purchasing, which has been you know uh, is in the works, but but hasn't been fully utilised to date, and and that's something we'll have to lean on. Uh, at Bruegel, we we've put out some of my colleagues have put out a paper recently on a gas outlook for 2023, 2024, which which covers a lot of these things. Already.